Hello and uh, welcome to our newspaper review. We begin with The Independent. It shows the scars left in Mosul after the announcement by the Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi that it's been liberated from the militants who call themselves Islamic State. Iraqi flags have been raised there, but the article says IS snipers were still shooting from some buildings. A Deutsche Welle website has been writing live updates of the G20 summit in Hamburg, which finished over the weekend, of course. Uh, climate change, North Korea and trade, some of the big issues discussed. Quotes German Chancellor Angela Merkel saying, we were able to stabilise the world. The New York Times website, meanwhile, has allegations that Donald Trump Jr. met with a Kremlin-linked lawyer after being offered damaging information about Hillary Clinton. It's claimed the meeting was held during last year's US presidential campaign period. Daily Telegraph in Britain reports on a Brexit-related news article written by some senior members of the European Parliament. Uh, they reject Britain's rights offer to Europeans, calling it a damp squib. It will pay to be posh, is the headline in the Financial Times. It's looking at how certain human jobs will be lost as technology automation advances. It says people from more affluent backgrounds will be better off because the so-called soft skills they have will be more valuable. So uh, let's have uh, a look through those papers in a bit more detail. Uh, Cornelia Mayer, CEO of business consultancy MRL Corporation. Good to see you. Um, well, let's, let's start with the, 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 the Mosul story. I mean, the pictures, the images of the devastation of that city just show how intense and epic this battle ha has been. Well, and you know, it's not just Mosul, it's throughout Iraq, throughout Syria. It's been, it's been an epic, it's been a house to house, it's been a fight. You've been, you have millions of displaced people, as you said. Um, you have th hundreds of thousands of people that, were, that died, and it is great. I mean, we have to congratulate the Iraqi army for having, you know, achieved the liberation. But let's not forget it's not over, because if you deal with sort of asymmetric warfare with non-state actors, it's a little bit like water. If you push it away in one side, it will go to the other. So they've been squeezed out. But I mean, I thought this was a very good write through actually by their correspondent who's been there. But just looking at the, the importance of the airstrikes, because actually yeah. this couldn't have been achieved without the airstrikes. But of course, that's a much blunter instrument when it comes to trying to preserve and protect civilian life. Absolutely, absolutely. And you see that also when it comes to preserving cultural heritage, this, is one, this was one of the great Arab cities in, in, in this world. And uh, I mean, when we were looking at some of the reports being filed from the fl front line um, from Mosul yesterday, you just get a sense of how utterly devastated the city is. And one of the big challenges, not just hanging on to it to stop the militants coming back, but starting to think about how they, they even begin to rebuild not just the buildings, but people's yeah. lives. Yeah, there. people's lives. And let's not forget also, you had ISIL had sort of a state-like structure. And they had schools, so there's, there's, there's hundreds of thousands of youngsters who were thoroughly indoctrinated. Yeah, and it's also persuading the people of Mosul now to actually get behind the Iraqi government, because yeah. when ISIS moved in, 85% of the uh, residents there who are Sunni, majority, majority Sunni, uh, supported them because of the fact that well, the Iraqi government, Shia-led, hadn't looked after them. Yeah, and, and this is the, the sad thing about the whole, uh, the whole Iraq conflict. It has b brought to the forefront, which was not there to that extent, that sectarian and divide between Shias and Sunnis. Okay. Let's move on. Um, Deutsche Welle uh, covering the G20, as have many organisations. I'm sure you've been watching it closely. Um, uh, as with these summits, what's often most interesting is what happens on the sidelines yeah, and behind the scenes, isn't it? And, and the elephants in the room, which sort of get, which, which you, you, you then see. And what's really was, what, was, what was important, essentially, is everybody's starting to try to grapple with the new definition of how the US under Trump wants to define itself. There is no longer that clear, you know, Western leadership of the, of the U.S. And, and, and the Europeans are trying to grapple with it. You saw Merkel trying with President Xi um, to, to have some agreement on trade and on climate change to manage the situation. Mm. Now, yeah, China and Germany are, you know, very close on trade and these things, but 
they're not very close on other things such as democracy and human rights. She's known, isn't she, as the summit chancellor, but this won't have gone down as a success really for her. I mean, a lot of criticism of her in terms of choosing Hamburg itself as well uh, and the violence and the cost of the damage uh, given the protests, what, three consecutive nights? Yeah, it, it was, it was, and that was, that was really when you saw the, the, these very violent protests and when you look at the protesters, some of them were not violent, some of them were violent, but they shared one thing. They didn't agree that the G20, which represent two-thirds of the world population and 85% of the world's GDP, should have as, should really be the deciding um, uh, forum for, 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 the, for, for where the world is going. It was interesting, uh, just looking at the climate change aspect, um, the other nations and the EU recognizing the US decision to withdraw from the Paris Accord, yeah. but Turkey starting to say, well, actually, if this affects compensation, if the US pulling out affects the compensation for developing countries, then actually we might have to rethink it as well. Yeah, and, and you will see that Turkey has voiced what other countries probably didn't voice so far because they were not represented. There were not so many um, emerging economies at the table. Well, I think it's all about the classification of Turkey being a developing country. Yeah, exactly. Which, which and, means and, they would and, actually get and, money rather and, than contribute. Yes, money. and and I think if this is to work, you will need that fund to help um, the developing countries along. Okay, let's move on. Uh, New York Times, uh, another <laughs> potential <laughs> Russian connection. This is uh, Donald Trump Jr., who is running the property empire now for his father, apparently, even though the father's got access through trust. But because he's not a member of the administration, doesn't have to reveal his links with people close to the Kremlin. Just talk us through, because I mean, I mean, for a lot of people watching, these Russian connections you know, are, are moving well, so incrementally. Well, what are we, how, how, where are what, we at what I find, What I find scary is that the chairman of the, of the, of the Trump campaign uh, was in the meeting and the senior advisor, his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, was in the meeting. So they went and met a, a lawyer that had links um, to the Kremlin um, that wanted to, that had her as an intro that she had damaging information about Clinton to reveal. But this is after, though, Trump had won. Yeah, no, this was, be, this was before, this was before Trump, this was before, this was before Trump had won, wasn't it? It was, was, um, that was, that was before, and that's why it wasn't that, on June 9, 9 2016. Ah, right, okay, during the campaign. Yeah, yeah, it was during, during, the, the, during campaign. the campaign. But, you know, it, it, A, Kushner should have revealed it, um, but the other thing is, what were these people doing talking to an other nation, to a foreign nation, about, you know, information about another candidate? This is like the Conservatives going to talk to whatever, Slovenia or some country about damaging information about Mr. Corbyn. Not that we're suggesting that that's happened at all. No, 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 but clear, this, this is like, the, that, no, it <laughs> I mean, hasn't. Um, but but it's, it's just extraordinary but, that you could, this yeah. is not, this is not, not the history between Russia and the United States doesn't really lend itself to seeing them as a friendly ally. Okay, but, but again, it's just drip, drip, drip. There's no yeah. knockout blow in mm. any of this stuff anyway. Uh, we no, haven't got a bit of time left. Let's, let's, yeah, let's, 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 let's push on, on because... Uh, European Parliament rejects Britain's damp squib offer on citizen rights. It's all about the grandfathering of uh, the rights of EU citizens. Just explain uh, what, what that means. Well, it, 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 is, it is about, it, it means one is, is the European Court of Justice um, ability, um, you know, jurisdiction. So EU citizens who stay in this country, uh, 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 according to the have. European Parliament, want to have the same rights that they've always had yeah, hitherto. Exactly. Hither, hither exactly. Hitherto, and um, that means um, free, you know, ability to, of, of, of work. And, you know, up to now, if you're an EU citizen, you can come in, you can bring in your dependents. Now there will be a threshold of how much you earn to bring in dependents and things like that. And the article seems to say that the, the misgivings the European Parliament has is this it, it will create a second class of citizenship. Absolutely. And when you look at, I've just come back from the continent, and when you look at the commentaries, especially on German TV, German state-run TV, the... My God, it's it's quite. There is a lot of anger about about how how we Britain are handling um, Brexit. Okay, right. Time just to slip in the uh, FT now. It'll pay to be posh when the next phase of robot revolution takes off. It's, it's fascinating. I mean, AI now really being discussed by so many papers and people, and, and the changes it's going to make to you know, working. Practices. It's, it's going to be hundreds of thousands of accountants and people like that. Not so well pay, paid white collar jobs are going to go out. And yes, of course, it will pay to 
to be posh because probably if you have good mathematics skills, um, that will help you in the new thing. If you have good in, in the personal the skills. Posh, though. I, mean, I don't think posh is always to do with this. No, but, but, yes. no, but you have a higher income, so it's yeah. easier for you to get the extra no, training. A lot, posh, a lot of posh people don't have very much money either, I don't think. Either. No, well, but it's, 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 it's soft <laughs> skills, isn't it? It's, that it, 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 it's the soft skills, but it's also if you have more access to posh people have access to things. Yeah. They have access to training. Yeah. They have access to things that not so posh people don't have. But I mean, millions of jobs, though, potentially at threat by uh, AI. Yeah, but yeah. millions of new jobs will be created. Although, you know, some people will say it pays to be posh, twas ever thus. Twas ever thus. <laughs> right. so, Cornelia, very, very good to see, uh, see you again. You. Thank you. Very Thanks very much. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Nice Thanks a lot. From uh, us, that is a, a look at the national and international threat. See you soon. See you soon.